Okay, so today we have a topic that will probably apply to a lot of you out there, and it's on how to relearn your electronic throttle body. Now, this procedure should be done anytime it's been changed, obviously, anytime the battery's been disconnected or has went dead, um, same thing, obviously, or anytime you've cleaned the electronic throttle body. They're all three different instances where the computer, the PCM, has to relearn the closed idle values. And that's very important for overall idle quality. Uh, it can prevent idle hunt, and also it can affect uh, shift points of the transmission because it's the biggest uh, uh, input, I guess you could say, for the overall torque load value uh, computed by the PCM on there. It's all inferred based on the throttle angle. So if it's off, everything else can be off from that point on back. Now some vehicles, mainly the bigger trucks like a F-150, a full-size Expedition, a you know Super Duty that has gas engines in it, uh, they produce a lot of carbon so that the carbon can be so much on there that the um, idle values are reset, the throttle angles reset whenever you do any kind of repair and then you go to start it after the repair and now you have a crank no start or you start it and it really has a really low idle to it and it just runs horribly. That's because it's not getting the proper amount of airflow coming past there and it's going to take a long while to recalculate. Whereas this method, what you're going to do is you're going to relearn it right away. And that brings me to my next topic. If you are doing any other repairs where you disconnect the battery and then those values are reset, you're going to want to clean the electron throttle body before this reset and relearn procedure takes place. That's very, very important for the idle values also. So it's a few things to take into account. Now, if you are cleaning your electronic throttle body, what you want to do is follow my video. I'll link it down below on how to clean that properly and, of course, safely. If you don't follow that video and do it properly, you can actually have a chance to chop your finger off on there. These electronic throttle bodies with their motors and their gear reduction on the side here, they're very strong and it can get real dangerous real fast. So just follow my video on that and I'll link to that down below here. Besides that, whether you've cleaned it or you've replaced it, here we go. Here's the reset and then, of course, the relearn procedure on how to do it properly on Ford vehicles. Now, the process to reset the memory inside the PCM is quite simple. What you want to do is find your negative battery cable, and we're going to disconnect that. Make sure your key is out of the ignition. We're going to take it off of there. Okay. And then we're going to pull it up and off of there, and then put some kind of insulator usually a piece of cloth, something like this, between the negative battery post and the negative battery clamp on here. Something like that, so there's no chance of them touching on there. Okay, you see that? And then what you're going to want to do is take a jumper cable like this, and this will jumper from the positive side, okay, right there, to the negative side right here, and that'll short out any capacitors on the inside of the, of the PCMs or any other modules and fully drain them. So you may see a spark, you may not. And just put it on there, make sure you have good contact, okay? And just let it sit there for you know a minute or so and make sure the capacitors inside that retain the memory in the PCM are actually discharged so it loses that memory and starts fresh. And after a few minutes, a minute or so, you pull it off the positive first, the safest way to do it, and then we'll pull off this side, and then we can start reassembling our battery terminal back onto our battery itself right here. And then tighten it down. Okay, so step one, the first thing you want to do is make sure all your accessories are off, like headlamps, AC, your blower motor, your rear defrost, all those big accessories like that, wipers, all, all your accessories in general should be off. And then we're going to reach over here, and we're going to turn the key to the on position, and then wait for the cluster to prove out, and that's usually the right amount of time for the throttle body to sweep in there. Let it prove out. And then we're going to start the vehicle. Now once the vehicle has started, you want to let it idle for 10 to 15 minutes, let it get to that full operating temperature, and then wait another 5 minutes thereafter so it can learn to cold, 
two full hot values for idle trim on there. And what we're doing right now is we're learning the base idle trim. After this, we'll learn you know loads and all that kind of stuff and shift points. At this point, you want to start off with a good known base idle value so you can get that trim angle on the throttle body. And I'll show you how it looks in the scan tool. Okay, so while scan tool is not required, I'm just showing you how it looks on here so you can understand a little bit better. Here's the actual plate position and there's the desired plate position that it wants it to be at. As long as it's not over three degrees difference from each other, you're just fine. Five degrees on, it'll set a uh, fault code. Up here you can see it has learned the throttle trim initially and right now, over here, you can see the trim value is dropping and that's because it's learning the throttle angle and what's needed to achieve the desired RPM. So you can see it going through the process right here, live in front of you. And this is why you have to wait and let it idle so it can hone in the fine idle points on here. Just a few seconds ago, it was at 0 0.74, and you can see it keeps dropping so that it, it hones in that perfect idle. After that, everything else is based off of this base idle. That's why it's so important to learn it properly. And you can see we're at full hot right now, and it's basically bottomed out at 0 0.57. It's not going any further. Um, you wouldn't know that it's done learning if you didn't have a scan tool. That's why I say just wait the 10 to 15 minutes, and you'll know for sure it's learned by then. That's it. That's all there is to relearning an electronic throttle body on Ford vehicles. It's very, very simple compared to other manufacturers. Now that the vehicle is already hot and warmed up, what you want to do is go for a test drive and learn the shift points. Drive normally. Don't drive too soft or too harsh and it will also learn the shift points. That's very important now that the idle has been learned on the vehicle. So hopefully this helps. It's a very important procedure whenever you're disconnecting the battery, have a dead battery, clean the throttle body or replace the throttle body. So just keep it in mind whenever you do future repairs.